Hello there everyone, my name is Elusive Ghost and welcome to something a little bit different. Today we are joined by Rhys Geoffroy from Boundless Games, he's the CEO, and we're going to talk a little bit about Monster Tribe, his upcoming game. Um, so Rhys, how are you tonight? I'm pretty good. I'm uh, just recovering from a cold, so, you know, it's on the up. Yeah, good, because I'm recovering <laughs> from a uh, a lack of a voice, so it's probably still lingering a bit on my side as well but <laughs> it's nice to have you up and about yeah so. for sure and thanks for having me on i appreciate it no of course thank you for being here um so monster tribe we all know is a open world monster collection game but going straight in there what would you say sets it apart from all the other games that are out there following that similar genre yeah so, I mean, the main idea of why this, you know, concept came to be in the first place was at the time of making this game uh, two and a half years ago, um, open world monster catcher games aren't really a big thing, at least not that I knew of. And so I kind of, you know, from from my childhood playing a lot of games like Pokemon or Digimon, um, I wanted to make something like this um, after learning how to make games. And so basically... I think the main unique elements are, would be like the open world aspects, you know, exploring the world anywhere you want at, um, in any order, um, kind of like, you know, like an open world RPG outside of the genre. Uh, but then also things like uh, collecting resources, you know, doing things like fishing and mining and wood cutting. I was a huge fan of uh, RuneScape growing up, and so mm -hmm. I wanted to bring in a lot of these kind of outside um, aspects rather than just combat and talking so yeah the open world exploration and the resource collection creates this kind of new uh inventive gameplay loop for the for the genre and i think there's also there isn't a lot of monster collection games that just let you go wherever you want it's always a fixed route um, yeah and i think that's down to yeah. levels and everything like that it's really really linear in those kind of cases but um yeah, yeah, for sure. I, we wanted to create a non-linear experience. And I think a lot of games, they don't do that because of, you know, levels and things like that. It that kind of creates a hindrance. But we've tried to work around that with, you know, level caps at different points and actually having mm -hmm. the levels of the creatures kind of dynamically change depending on how far you've progressed in the game. So... Yeah. Makes it a bit more of a challenge as well because I suppose you can't just out level everything and then just go storming through which makes it a bit easier yeah exactly yeah the game's adaptive yeah which is nice makes replayability a bit easier as well for sure so there are also things that i found to be quite interesting with that is rather than using the capture mechanic which a lot of things do use you've got that dna to resurrect all of the different monsters as well so you actually need to find them first can't just catch the first one you you find and uh, train it from there that was yeah in my life. for sure and uh something something on that is uh that was actually something as well from a, a childhood experience is uh there was a game i used to play fossil fighters and i love dinosaurs and in this game there's this kind of idea where you're collecting these fossils to revive these creatures and so uh with the way that we've kind of created this game is with DNA. So basically when you battle monsters and you, you know, kill certain monsters, you can possibly find the DNA and with the resource collection that you're doing outside of the, you know, the battles, um you can actually resurrect the creatures to have them. Uh for the people that are interested in how that mechanic actually uh functions. Yeah, and there was quite a few different levels of resources as well. It wasn't just we're going to yeah. chop down this tree and that's it. There were different tiers of wood fish um rocks everything like that that you rocks, can collect as well spores. yeah then um yeah where what kind of made you think this is the type of game i need to make because i know you had a couple games before that you tried um with game development i think i played your last one um which we've been back and forth about on that for a couple of years but what just made you go this is what I need to do now. Honestly, the audience. 
Um, so I've made a few different games before this. This isn't my you know first ever project. Uh, this is my first major like commercial project, but obviously I've dabbled in game development for two or three years before this. And honestly, I was just looking at, you know, I loved making games and sharing that experience on YouTube. So I was just trying to, you know, create something that would be inventive and something that is unique that not anyone else is doing on YouTube. Um, and so I experimented with a few different projects and Monster Tribe or Monster Tower uh, at the time. The original. Actually, you know, that was the spark. That was the the video series that kind of caught attention. And that's what's kept me going and turning into a full time, you know, real project was the audience engagement. Monster Tower always caught my attention because you originally announced it as being fighting your way up the tower, I believe. And then Yeah, these different towers. Yeah. Um and then the Monster and... Train came out and I was like, I wonder if they took this idea. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty good. Uh, no, and then um, one of the biggest questions, and I think you have asked answered this in some of your devlogs, but just for those that don't know, why did you pick a 4v4 for your, as your battle system? Honestly, I think uh, 4 is just a, a pretty even number. I think, you know, something like a lot of turn-based games, outside of the Monster Catcher range, uh, you know, in different turn-based RPGs, a lot of games use like 2 or 3, um, which I found just weren't enough variety uh to kind of create strategic mm. combat uh you know strategies and things like that but something like pokemon where you have six um it just feels too much you, you're not you're not controlling an army you're controlling like a team of like close-knit monsters that you're kind of raising uh it yeah. creates more of a personal experience the less you have but having too few you create you know way too many uh, options for people to, you know, decide on one specific team. So honestly, it was just kind of a numbers game, just going back and forth with what feels the best um, on a team-based, you know, grid movement um, battle system. Yeah. The grid makes it quite interesting because it kind of wants you to know the abilities of the other creatures as well, especially with some of them just control either straight lines or a bit more of a scattered approach so you really need to know your positioning and what the enemy the enemy's moves are going to be really so it's yeah a bit more fluid and tactical yeah for sure but um weirdly enough we were going to go on to monster tower was my next question which <laughs> from from that original idea so devlog zero what do you think has changed the most from your vision uh, into Monster Tribe versus what you would have liked to have kept in that one? So um, I think the biggest thing, I halfway through development, for those of you that are unaware, I, I changed the game from Monster Tower to Monster Tribe and, you know, this new branding or whatever. And I think the, the biggest thing for me was getting that second chance to almost reinvent the game. Um, not entirely, but it gave me the opportunity to kind of revise certain things. And so uh, first, the theming, the game, I felt was a little bit too childish, and we wanted to bring out a little bit more of an adult-catered uh, audience. And so when I rebranded to Monster Tribe, um, you know, things like the the key art, the cover art, uh, the logo design, everything was a little bit uh, more kind of fluid and um, not as childish, I guess, at the end of the day. Mm. Um, but I guess as far as the actual gameplay, I would say Monster Tower at the time was a lot more based on the towers, you know, getting to these towers, completing these dungeon like, um, objectives and just not really having any kind of essence of what the game is outside of the towers. Whereas with Monster Tribe rebranding, the game's now a lot more f flushed around the island itself, you know, the, the characters and the stories, um, that are created with, you know, quests from different NPCs and the different villages and the different pieces of the island. Um, so kind of creating a more, like, interconnected society over this, like, scattered mm. uh, dungeon crawler type aesthetic. Yeah. So you've t it's almost gone from being a roguelite to a fully fledged open world exploration game. It yeah. Definitely expanded. Yeah. Uh, 
I don't. The battle mechanic stayed the same though. Through yeah, the much. entire time. Just polished. Just polished. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the theme. The theme and the battle mechanic, so. Yeah. Battle mechanic was polished quite a few times, if I'm not mistaken. Went through a yeah. lot of iterations. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's up until last month, it was still being polished <laughs> up until two weeks ago. We we just added in new features of uh, to make the grid more uh, more fun and kind of like strategic. So it, it's been a constant like upgrade on the same thing since the start of development three, three years ago. Yeah, it's been that long. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But, it's insane. Um, so how many monsters do you think we can collect around so no mutations none of that just just monsters yeah so there's there's 72 monsters in the game total um not including the legendary fabled beast creatures the boss fights um which are not capturable so that's why i don't keep oh. them in the in the roster um just purely like storyline but um for those that are unaware there is this mutation um, kind of, you know, core mechanic to the game where basically you can mutate these creatures to adapt to different kinds of environments. So each creature you're looking at between two or three different versions or like alterations. So, mm. or more. So it, it's around like 200, 200 ish different uh, creatures once you factor in mutations. And um, from the Kickstarter as well, I think one of the fusions was actually. Um, I got one of the fusions for Shivran, which has yes. completely changed yep. its design, which was pretty fun to go through that as well. And it's, mm. yeah, it makes you think a bit more about what potentially the um, typing and everything like that um, factors in, which we'll, we'll put some on the screen of the Shivran change, which will be nice. So. Yeah, for sure. It you know it's it's creating um, you know different thematics on the same creature, and I, that was the most fun thing for me was designing the monsters, but also just coming up with these different alterations um, rather than just a color swap. You know, like how Pokemon has shiny Pokemon or yeah. whatever other games have. These are not just color changes, but actual alterations on the creature's design as a whole. Yeah, it's it's almost so like the very fun. The original Eevee, when I first picked up that, and you got, right, I can right. turn this into three different types. You're mm -hmm. like, okay. It's got to be <laughs> Jolteon, but I'm like, okay. So, yeah, it's it's yeah, nice it, to have it, those options for your yeah, favorite. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun to see what happens, um, even in a small way, but it's 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 fun um, for, you know, to come up with these new designs, but also to see new designs if you're playing through mm. the game and you've had the same monster half you know through the half the game and and you mutate it and now it's a slightly different creature it's it's fun and exciting i look forward to seeing some more of those ones but um in your own words and this is a very important question in your own words why is shivran the best monster in the entire game um well you know Personally, for me, I have to say, I think it's a good design. I, I, I do like the design, um, but definitely not my favorite. Um, I think it's it's fun. It's a nice like I, I like bird. I like birds. I don't know yeah. why, but like that's something in any kind of like monster game. I've always been driven to like birds and winged flying creatures, um, but a lot of them are very like almost kind of like a glass aesthetic very fragile and nimble so with something like shriven you have a very different take on it where it's like mm. more of this burly monster type uh humanoid um kind of design which i, th I think is fun and that's why I, that's why i liked it i was drawn to it I'm like, <laughs> yeah i'll make everyone love it if i can but um it, it, if... it has a cool biography though i will say i think it's a very interesting creature one of the more mature ones, I'd say. But um, if you had to pick a favorite of yours, either through, let's say, one being through the design process, which you just fell in love with, and perhaps one just aesthetically you think is great, ignoring the legendary skills. 
they're, I'm sure they're epic, but <laughs> yeah. So, um, I since like the beginning of time, um, actually the first ever designed monster, which is not what it currently looks like. And if I can find it, I'll bring up all the different um, sprite variants that it's gone through because I've reworked this design three or four times. Um, mm -hmm. But this original concept I actually made like five years ago when I was first getting into pixel art. And I designed this monster. I've always loved like dinosaurs and dragons and, you know, things with scales or spikes or whatever you want to say or call them. And uh, so that was actually the first designed monster ever. And after, you know, revisiting it over and over and over as I got better at my pixel art abilities, it's now just still my favorite design because the concept I love and then the execution, yep. that final time that I did it, I just, I couldn't be happier with the design. So I would say Polygon. Um, and then I would just also mention Stoport because that is by far the uh, YouTube fan favorite monster of all time oh, really? for sure. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Every, every single person that has commented on the months, like on monsters, like almost every single person has commented on Stillport specifically or, you know, in the live streams. So, um, yeah, shout out to that as well, which I think it's just because it's a fun, funky design. It's this mushroom creature with these rocky arms and it's just such a different, um, body type than you're, yep. you're used to seeing that I think people just thought it was interesting. Yeah, it is like a walking toadstool with massive arms. It is a good yeah. one. But um, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's loads of different aesthetics because you had things like um, Toe Will as well, which was just... Just got the um, shales on the back, which I thought was quite interesting yeah. with the ember tail. There's... Um, yeah, the yeah, graveyards. There's, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot and of different ones. We, we definitely tried to tie a lot of the monsters together. So there's a lot of these kind of partnerships, um, mm. which I do see in Pokemon sometimes. Like from time to time, they'll make, you know, like Plusle and Mine in. They're kind of these monsters that are coming together. And so we wanted to kind of make sure that all the monsters in the game felt like authentic to the world. So like a lot of them kind of interact with like other monsters in, in different ways. Uh, like there's also mm. the the grave digger uh, Atan, which goes hand in hand with the tall design of being this, you know, gravestone, basically gravestone mound uh, cow. So yeah, a lot of that kind of stuff <laughs> in the designs. That's all right. That That's what ties it in. So it makes it uh, feel yeah. alive, if you want to say. So um. Keeping on theme with the uh, monsters, which one would you say was the hardest one to make? For you? Mm. Either no, that, that could be I... through abilities or... One of the hardest monsters to make, I feel, honestly, would be... Actually, um, Cloman. Cloman was really hard to get right, uh, which is actually, that's the that's the starting monster it's very basic uh, it's definitely one of the most basic if not the most basic design um it was just really hard to get proper because i'm trying you know you're trying to create this creature that is both simple and kind of basic but also in you know like kind of engaging to to make sure that the players still appreciate you know the the design and this starting monster you don't you don't want to have a bad starting uh, experience right and i think monsters are a huge part of that game so the design went over quite a few different um like kind of creation processes throughout the game's development um but i think that the current version which i'm sure we'll also put on screen somewhere yeah. um i think is really fun and you know having it's the only monster in the game that has every single type uh for a fusion so you can fuse it into any single uh type and with those kind of orbs circling around this magic sorcerer uh, creature, it really helped to kind of create like characteristics for the different mm. designs for the fusions. Yeah. And th that's exactly what you said is because it's a basic monster and everyone's going to see it, you've kind of got to do it better than the rest of them. 
because if it's yeah. boring no one's going to want to use it and with the exactly. opportunities to have it on any typing you're yeah. like yeah, yeah you're going to see this a lot <laughs> you gotta make sure it's right <laughs> yeah so. for sure but, um moving away from the creatures and going back uh, back a couple of years if you had to take some lessons away from the previous games that you made what what would you say have helped you in the development of Monster Tribe? Um, I would say publishing a game. I, I published two games before this on on Steam. Um, my first one was uh, this kind of space arcade mm. style shooter, uh, like twin stick top down shooter. And then the next one was Shield Shock, which was this like platformer, again, arcade, like high score kind of infinite wave um, like action game and yeah i think the best thing was just learning how to like launch a game you know putting something on steam what actually happens when you put a game on steam what happens do, mm. do you just get a bunch of sales from nothing or do they not advertise it at all and so i kind of learned the idea of like how to get over um like failure because i i did a kickstarter for one of them um or both of them i think and one of them succeeded and one of them failed and getting this you know concept of like the snowball effect how like if you have a good start to like something like a kickstarter campaign or you know mm -hmm. some kind of marketing strategy it can help you a lot to kind of snowball into a success um but honestly aside from that i'd say not a whole lot I think I learned more from playing games and getting a like getting a good idea of what makes a good game from professional good games rather than looking at my own games that I started on that I was kind of just making because I wanted to get into game development and create these features that I've seen in games um so yeah just more polishing like ideas and looking at how to create a real game from good games that i've played or heard of before and i mean that that's exactly it the the first one the first two the first five the first ten they might not they might not be hits but they are stepping stones and learning curves and if you can take something away like you said with the steam publishing and just making sure you've got the market there then i think that's a win really yeah um, for sure so um, so I also played Shield Shock, which was great because I think I spammed you a couple of years ago with loads of things I want to change. But from a player's perspective, <laughs> I was like, "Yep, yeah. yeah." So, um, with the demo has been out already for a little bit, how much more content do we think is available in the final release than there is in the demo? Just a rough so, estimate. Yeah, for sure. So I'm actually. Uh, the final step of development, because this game is coming out very soon. Um, and so the final step is doing a final run through, playing through this game from start to finish, you know, trying to break the game as much as I possibly can to fix as much as we can mm. before we go gold and, you know, start heading into, you know, that pre-month marketing and launch. Um, so I don't have the best, you know, like kind of idea on that but i would say the demo was about 30 minutes of gameplay obviously you can you know play as long as you want there's no time limit on it but it's about 30 minutes and the real game i'd say is about anywhere from 6 to 15 hours depending on you know how quickly somebody runs through something or you know how much they want to skip mm. as far as like just running through to get here's my objective i'm just going to go from point a to point b do that you know it so it, it can range very very high um but i'd say about 60 6 to 15 hours for a game completion that's not too bad considering you can find some of these monster games and people are running through them in like an hour and something you're like nah yeah i want to go chop some trees build a <laughs> house all yeah. that kind of stuff but, yeah um, i mean if if you're looking for completion I would say not, no less than 30 hours. You know, if you're trying to unlock every single monster and, you know, do every side quest and all these hidden objectives that we've added into the game. Mm, that's good. 
it can be really long. Um, but again, you don't want to put, you want to make sure that the core user experience, like the core player experience is the best. So we put, you know, the biggest focus on how do we make a good game, uh, you know, from start to finish. And then, you know, to flush out the world and make it feel real, we've added in tons of things to make the entire world feel alive and, you know, like a breathing world that, with you not in it, still exists. So, yeah. And a game only lasts as long as someone plays it. Exactly. I've spent thousands of hours in a game that probably shouldn't have that many hours in it, so it's... <laughs> It worked for yeah. me. Yeah. Um, so one thing I did want to mention as well, uh, sticking on Monster Tribe for uh, the last question, is there's loads of games that are coming out in the last, I don't know, three, four years. Get released into early access or just get released with loads of bugs. And I think it was really important and it was a really good moment to say that you want to just create the best possible experience for all of your different players. And you haven't released it yet because you want to get all of these bugs squashed, polished, everything like that. I just wanted to say that that was really good. And I think most of the most of the players would agree that it's worth waiting a little bit longer than having to have another early access game. Which yeah, takes for sure. many years to fix. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. And and I, I agree. I mean, you know, any decision you make, you're going to have uh, feedback on both ends of the spectrum. Yeah. I've had people, you know, DM me saying that they hate me because uh, I promised this product and it got delayed or whatever. And I've had people that have, you know, said, you know what, we want the best experience. I'm really glad you're doing this. Most people wouldn't do it because that means a longer development cycle. You're taking more time exactly. to work on this game and they can appreciate that. So I think at the end of the day, do what makes the most sense for you um, in, in whatever case. Like, understand that there is going to always be feedback on both ends. Um, but, you know, is it is it worth it? And overall, I think I'd rather have a better game launch, a better game experience for the people that really want to play it than to get something out because I said it would be out at a certain time because five years from now nobody will remember the game being delayed six eight ten months but if it's a really good game or if it's a really bad game you'll remember that so yeah. it's important to get the development right for sure exactly so um moving away from monster tower for a minute i wanted to just talk about um, a bit more of the experience that you've had during this project. So what would you say is some of the positives you've had over the last two, three years of development, just personal experiences? I mean, definitely uh, a lot. There's there's so many positives, but I think to encompass most of it, it's getting a full-time job, doing what I love to do, uh, you know, making my hobby become my career, that was a huge positive experience and something I didn't plan on happening um, so soon. I planned on, you know, developing games for five, six years before making any kind of real money, you know, sustainable money. Um, and so over the course of this last two, three years, having this be my full time job that I can believe in and know is this is what I do now. Um, by far is, you know, the biggest accomplishment and the happiest um, kind of outcome. Other than that, you know, it's it's been great just getting to work with other teammates and um, just kind of build a game that I've always envisioned building from a, a child. So lots of great experiences, <laughs> for sure. I'm sure that's something you can't replace. No, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> but um yeah that was there's something that i always think sh needs to be brought up in these kind of chats and that's that's all the negative experiences or difficult experiences that we we kind of have going on behind the scenes whether it's a content creator whether it's a developer whether it's just i don't know one of the artists sound producers anything like that is um 
all the different mental health things like uh, anxiety, depression. Um, I think it's worth having those discussions um, out in the open because you don't really see that side of anyone. You just see they've started something, they've finished something. It's good or bad. There's no, um, there isn't anything to see the challenges in there. And um, one of the biggest things that I struggled with over the last uh, two, three years because of uh, COVID, because of my daughter being born, uh, everything like that was depression, which not being someone that talks about it was really strange because all of a sudden I was hit with a wave of this isn't good. I don't know what to do, no one to talk to, etc, etc, but it was, and similar to what you've done about your anxiety, is taking that first step and just saying, I think there might be something here, um, I thought was quite good. I've done that before, I do it with my work colleagues, I do it with um, family members now. I admitted that I was in a stage of depression and I needed the help, um, and we took steps. I ended up doing content creation because I could no longer play games. But I found that content creation made me think differently and was able to structure my life around things that were making me unhappy. So it's mine in a weird way has helped being a content creator. Yeah. But it's a, it's a bit of the reverse reverse psychology, but well, we'll see how it goes, but never know. Yeah, ask me in six months. But no, I thought it, I thought it was great that you've um, you've made a video quite recently, which I'll link in the description as well, around having anxiety and yeah, I... how to how to deal with it. Um, yeah, in you know the field. Yeah, for sure. Um, something I I always try to do since I started on YouTube till now is giving uh, a real experience you know like i the reason that my my channel is my name like uh or what i do what what kind of content i make it's it's because i want to give people a real experience so um you know i don't really hide things i never really hide anything um if i'm going through an experience if i have to delay the game i talk about it if i have to you know redesign something because i just i hated it um i talk about it i don't um kind of downplay things that are maybe a little less entertaining i always try to give people like the real experience because at the end of the day yes i'm i mean i'm making videos uh and i'm making games for people to play them and you know watch them but at i also am doing these things because i want to help other people that are trying to do something similar and so that's a huge thing that I ad like kind of advocate for is like, uh, you know, full time game development, how to do it, you know, what what are the risks, what are the pros, you know, um, any kind of failure or success that I've mustered or kind of gone through, I taught it mm. because people should know, you know, the, yeah. these are realities. So, um yeah, I think it's good to touch on these things because they're real and, and everyone's mm. a little bit different, but everyone has the same emotions. You know, everyone has uh, happiness in their life or anger or sadness and nobody's, you know, everyone's human. Um, so it's it's good to talk about not just the good. I have released my game. I made, you know, a million dollars, but it's also good to talk about uh, this game has literally given me depression or anxiety or whatever it is. Um, if it's something that happens, it's it's good for people to understand that could be a reality. Um, yeah. But I always try to uh, give people a takeaway. If I talk about something negative, I'm always going to talk about, you know, what what did I do about it? Or what am I doing about it? Because sometimes it's it's not a, a problem that has been solved. It's a problem that's ongoing. But I always try to give something to say, you know, here's what I'm doing about it. Because if you don't, then... You're kind of just giving people false hope, almost, right? Um, yeah. So, but yeah, I and, think it's good to talk about. And it's also just putting it out there because there was situations where it was like, some I was talking to someone about it, and they were going, "Have you just tried music? Have you just tried listening to, like, 
the music you listened to while you were growing up? I was like, no. <laughs> I guess I'll put some Linkin Park and Blink-182 on, some 41, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. And then I was like, bopping a bit. I'm like, okay. It sounds so stupid, but it works. And you're like, yeah, I didn't think of that because I'm in a different mindset. So, yeah, it is nice to have those open discussions and to be able to approach anyone that might have a similar situation. Uh, and like you said, just be aware. It's a possibility. Yep. Yep. It's a good... Everything can be good, which is nice. But, um, yeah. So we'll move on slightly from that one. And um, going on to Boundless Games. So Boundless Games is still you, which is great. But recently you've had a few extra people help you with um, Monster Tower. So you had um, one being your brother and Lennart. How different has it been to go from just being on your own to working in a team on this project? What was the... Was there anything in particular you learnt? Was it helpful if you covered each other's weaknesses? Uh, anything like that? Um, there's there's a ton of ton of differences going from solo development to team development. Um, when I started the project, it caught the you know some attention, and I started making YouTube videos about it, and I started building out this main kind of this basic prototype. Um, and so I just you know. I, I, it was my hobby. I wasn't doing this in any kind of professional sense at all or anything like that. And so I had, I'd asked my brother if he wanted to help me because we used to make game ideas. We used to like, you know, sit in the living room, um, as kids and make game ideas mm. for fun. Um, and so when I started picking up game development, it was like, well, why don't we try to just do this together? And so he, you know, he knew some stuff with like coding, uh, some computer science stuff like that. So, um, I asked him to do it. This is a fun thing. And, you know, now three years later, we're here and we're both, you know, working on it. And, uh, it's, it's been a great experience. It's definitely, it always helps. I think having different perspectives, you can always learn something. Um, mm. because nobody has one, like the one true right, uh, perspective. So, um, but yeah, also weaknesses, I think is, also something that helped like i never knew how to do music or anything like that any kind of audio and so that's what leonard you know leonard was a subscriber from the youtube channel and he reached out okay. to me um back you know when i first started the project i had quite a few people reach out reach out for like com composition and he was just you know the one i interviewed a bunch of people and he was just the one that i felt you know represented the best idea of what monster tribe or monster tower at the time uh was so that was a great experience and i actually i ended up picking up sound design uh you know he'd done a bunch of the sound effects for the game and then halfway through i decided i kind of want to give it a try and i took over creating the sound effects and so that's like a new skill set that i've learned that i yeah. never thought i could do because i didn't believe in myself to do that but it just seemed really fun and you know it was very exciting and i wanted to take some work off of his plate so that opened up uh my eyes to sound design and um it's just been great not having to do everything yourself you know you're building this game and you're making it uh, a bigger greater project than you ever could because you just have more uh people working on the project so it's nice <laughs> it's nice for sure yeah and and the big thing there is sharing all the different experiences as well because yeah i found i found that with content creation it was to start with it was very much right well you need to know how to edit you need to know how to do thumbnails you need to know how to write scripts you need to plan out your things everything like that but as soon as you get someone that's in a similar position as you and they go right well i do this i do that you can at least cross reference and you can talk about it and yeah it's nice to bounce back back and forth ideas so it's good yeah, for sure but um so what is the future goals for boundless games once monster tribe is out where where to where to next it's it's a it's a scary thought because it's it's something i've been doing for the past 3 years it's like almost 
it, it's the start of my career. Um, and so it's kind of like, you know, the next chapter after the first real chapter of anything. Um, so I think something I've learned is definitely I am not somebody that can, I don't have the patience for three, four year long development cycles. Like, you know, if, if we didn't do a Kickstarter and we didn't get a publisher to, you know, help fund the, the game, I highly doubt that this game would actually be coming out. The only reason that this game is actually like launching officially is because um, of the engagement from the community, but also just like the the backing, the backers, the supporters, um, the people that believe in the project. Because without that, my motivation would not be high enough to finish this project. So I think, you know, moving forward, I need to focus on um, still understanding that like, I'm still a beginner, maybe not a beginner, but like uh, an introductory game developer. I haven't been doing this for the last 30 years and, you know, know exactly what I'm doing. Um, so I want to play into that strength. I want to create, you know, prototypes of games, games that take me six to nine months max, release them, see, you know, what are things that they liked about this game? What are things that they don't like? Um, I feel like every single project you work on, you do get better in some kind of aspect. Um, even just in development speed, you know, constantly going over the mm. same kind of uh, coding problems or, you know, things like that. Like you, you, you get faster at fixing things. So I just want to work on smaller projects that are more polished um, because at the end of the day, in a weird kind of way, you're only as good as you are when you start something because you kind of cap where your, your ceiling is um, from like your idea and your idea yeah. starts when you start the project. So like, you know, if I had started monster tribe now, the game would be quite a lot better. I would say in execution um, than it is in the, its current state because I have developed as a game developer um, and so not to say, you know, like you're always going to be in a learning state, so that's never going to go away. Um, and not, you know, not to say that the game is bad in any way, but it's just your, your idea, your concept, your execution, it's kind of only as good as you are when you start it. So just want to keep making, like keep starting at fresh levels, um, sooner. So that's, that's the future I'd say, at least for a while broadening all your different skill sets as well because now you can take the sound development that you got from this one and you can implement it does that mean yeah. that uh son of fire is coming back you're gonna finish that it's one? possible it, it is possible um i don't like i currently i i don't know what i'm gonna make next like something that a lot of people do is like six months out they might like start working on a, a concept or an idea um, and that's something I wanted to do, but I really just want to finish this game and like start fresh completely. So even if I say no new video for two or three months or something, um, while I kind of get the ball rolling and start creating my idea, I'm, I'm more about creating, um, experience for myself and mm. being, uh, like a, a robot or like a, just a company um, so I would, I just want to start completely fresh if this game, my all, I don't want to be like working on a game prototype and thinking about all the ideas for this next game while I'm making this current game, just trying to make this game the best that I can. Yeah. And then once it's finished, you know, I'll start working on that next thing. Um, which kind of also goes into the like authenticity of like how I, you know, give everyone my real experience. Like. I want to start making videos from the start of the, you know, the game prototype. I don't want to be working on it for six months and say, here, here's a, here's a game guys. Uh, you know, we're going to start developing this game. I want to go from the beginning and say, this is my idea. And this is why I'm excited about it. Let's, let's see where this goes. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit up in the air <laughs> right now. Well, that's where um, devlogs are really nice. Cause you can just get, player feedback essentially from the get-go exactly. rather than creating an entire game and then testing it and seeing, yeah. oh, it's actually not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But, um, no, it's good. It sounds sounds promising, and I'm sure there's going to be quite a few up-and-coming games that you've thought about because you've gone through 
numerous types. So who knows? Maybe the next yeah. one will be a roguelite or three D. I have 3D. no way, I have no plans as to where this next game goes. Just that I want to continue making games for as long as I can do that. You know, so that's that's the only objective. Yep. Have fun making games. There's the slogan. Have fun making games. <laughs> you can put that on Boundless, Boundless Games' as a little logo now. Have fun. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I mean, to be honest, that was, that was everything that I wanted to cover today, which has been great. I mean, what's the best place for people to follow you? It's Twitter, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I mean, YouTube for sure, number one. Uh, I focus 99% of my energy on YouTube and growing that. Um, but I would say Twitter is something I want to start back once I finish this game. I've been a little bit inactive uh, for the past few months. That's definitely something I want to get back to. Um, so YouTube, Twitter, Discord um, are the best S3. And then also just the Steam page of Monster Tribe um because that game is coming out very soon so um yeah yep. and everyone can wish list it what's into wish list absolutely yeah. and then we've got <laughs> we've also got your website which we'll uh put up on that side yep but um brilliant reese thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me today it's, um yeah it was awesome we we've we've been talking back and forth for quite a few years but it's nice to sit down and actually go right this is what i want to ask you you can't get out of it it's like you're not busy <laughs> i've booked you <laughs> but no i'm i'm really looking forward to it and i'm sure it'll be great yeah for sure well this has been an awesome awesome talk so hope everyone enjoyed yeah i'm sure they will but brilliant all right guys thank you very much for watching if you did like it give it a thumbs up if you want to see some more consider subscribing if you did like this format definitely let me know and definitely go and check out uh, monster tribe if you want to do that but with that guys i will catch you in the next one bye for now